Due to the national PPE crisis that we are currently in, Hygieia Healthcare in collaboration with local physicians and hospital policy writers have created a decontamination procedure for our clinical nurses and staff in the home health setting. Please review. The kit you see here is the recommended kit from Hygieia Healthcare in which we supply our nurses. It consists of safety glasses, a full face mask, a splash resistant Tyvek suit, an N95 face mask, a 70% alcohol solution, and a continuous atomizing spray bottle. As you can see, the recommended kit has full coverage from the front and the rear for the clinician in the field. The next kit is the suggested kit. It does not include the safety glasses, nor does it include the face mask. It does have safety goggles for splash protection, a splash resistant suit, as well as an SN95 mask and an atomizing 70% alcohol solution. As you can see, this kit offers adequate protection from the front with minimal splash areas around the cheek and eyes. The rear offers the same protection as the recommended kit. The third kit is a basic kit. It is the most widely used kits from all facilities. It consists of a isolation gown, an N95 mask, a bandana, and an optional scarf or shower cap for head coverage. This kit provides adequate coverage from the front with limited splash zones around the feet, the neck, and the face. The rear has adequate coverage, although the rear lower legs and head are exposed. The final kit is the CDC Crisis Kit. This kit is used in the emergency that there are no PPE supplies. It consists of goggles, a temporary isolation gown, a homemade CDC, duckbill N95 filter replacement mask, as well as a bandana. This kit has limited coverage. It is only used for one time. It has splash areas around lower legs, face, side of face, neck, and rear. It is not recommended unless crisis mode and there are no PPE supplies. Due to the decontamination process, these items here are necessary to complete the decontamination process without having any other transferable items in and out of the vehicle from the patient's home or to your car. We have put together a procedure that will show the beginning and end of the decontamination process that will limit your exposure to the coronavirus to yourself, family, and further patients. This has been put together with physicians and clinical policy coordinators from local hospitals due to the fact that we are out of supplies and or have to reuse our supplies. The visit and procedure consists of normal visits. The nurse arrives at the patient's home, secures her area, and opens her trunk to gather her supplies. The supply box in a PPE container are vital in the nurse's arsenal. They should be kept separate and all PPE supplies kept in paper bags due to the coronavirus lasting up to 24 hours on paper items and longer for plastic. It is advised to tear four to five paper towels off and have them ready for when you return to the vehicle. You'll see that next. You'll notice in the video there are two separate shoes, one to enter the patient's home and one for the nurse to wear throughout her day outside of patient homes, as well as a coat hanger that is fashioned to hold a trash bag once the nurse uh, returns from the patient's home. In the next clip, you'll see a nurse that has already put on her gown. We did not feel it was necessary to show the nurse's gowning. It is more important to see them ungowning after the decontamination process. In this clip, the nurse retrieves her N95 mask from the labeled paper bag N95, and she secures it around her face. She makes sure to snugly adjust it from the front as well as the rear ears, making sure there's a tight seal for the appropriate filtration of virus in particulate matter. Normally, you would see an individual put the mask on first and then the headgear. This nurse is a current ER nurse with sores on her ears, so they put the beanie on top to protect her ears just from the shot. But if you do put the beanie on or headgear on, make sure your SN95 mask is secure around all areas of your face. Next, secure the face mask on so you have a clear line of sight and that is resting on your forehead with no exposed skin 
to outside containments or areas. Next, put your gloves on one hand at a time and we will do two layers of gloves for this next procedure. Three if you are doing wound care. We will take our gloves and take a sack, put it around our thumb and put it up into our sleeve and then put one more glove above it. This allows us when we come out to have our glove pulled off and our trash sack is there available for us. As you can see from the clip, you'll don both gloves as usual. The difference here is on the second pair of gloves, you will take a trash sack and loop the handle around your thumb and either place it up either left or right arm. This will allow you to have a trash sack that is clean and uncontaminated when you leave the patient's home. And you will see how to attach that to your vehicle without it falling or blowing in the wind after this clip. If you are doing wound care, a third set of gloves will be utilized within the home or you can put the third set here. Again, that is doing wound care. So when you exit the house, you have two layers of gloves, one to be cleaned and one to take off your suit. Now the field clinician is fully protected from head, suit, and gloves. This allows them to perform their job within the home without being contaminated or risk of spreading the virus to other patients. The next shot will show the nurse exiting the patient's home. They will either shut the door themselves and spray their gloves and handle once exiting or have the patient or family member shut the door behind them. And then the outside decontamination process will begin six feet from the house. Ideally, you will not take any supplies in with you. If you do, they'll be in a plastic receptacle bag that can be thrown away. In the event that you have labs or other items that need to leave the home, they'll have to leave in a biohazard bag that can be decontaminated by spraying the alcohol solution. When the nurse has reached six to 10 feet from the home, she'll take her alcohol solution in her atomizing bottle and spray the back of her head, mask, arms, the lab bag if applicable, abdomen, torso, legs, and then finish by spraying her lower feet. This will get time for the nurse to dry before she reaches her vehicle to do the second wipe down to fully decontaminate her suit. It is necessary that when the nurse exits the house that she does not come in contact with any other individuals to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. She will wipe down the exterior door with her solution and then pull the second layer of gloves off, leaving the clean layer underneath. She will have one clean hand and one dirty hand, the dirty hand holding supplies. The nurse, if they have labs, they will drop that into the lab container. Next, the nurse will lay her supplies down on the paper towels that she had placed earlier before she left the home. Next, they will go ahead and take off the secondary glove that is revealing the trash sack up the sleeve. The nurse will take her other glove, pull it within the other dirty glove, and dispose of both dirty gloves within the trash sack. She will take the coat hanger and run it through the eye of one of the openings and secure it to the door. At this time, the nurse has two clean gloves. Any labs are in the lab container. They can focus on cleaning her supplies with the provided solution and the extra paper towels that are provided. Once they are done and dry, they can drop them into the paper sack labeled, labeled vital sign instruments. The nurse is now free to get another paper towel and spray her suit and her paper towel with the solution of alcohol and re-wipe the suit around her face, the back of her head, arms, and neck. The nurse should be able to spray and remove her face mask, followed by cleaning her glasses with another paper towel, securing it by the earpiece, and then cleaning again, and then just placing the goggles or glasses in the paper bag labeled headgear. The nurse should take another paper towel, spray it with the atomizing solution, and then spray down her hands and her arms so that way she can decontaminate again 
Take your paper towel and sufficiently wipe down the front, sides, and back of suit, and then start to remove the suit. It is at this time when you're removing the suit that you will want to grab your other pair of shoes and place them in front of you. As you lower the suit, you'll pull one leg out and place it into one of the shoes, pull the other leg out and place it in the shoes. You can reach around now and pick up your suit. At this point, you can go ahead and take your atomizer and start spraying the front and sides of the suit. You will notice you will still have your last layer of gloves on that have been decontaminated several times with the solution. When you're completed, you can go ahead and roll the suit up and then place it back into the container labeled suit. At this time, the nurse can take the alcohol solution and spray the shoes that are on the ground. They will take the shoes one at a time and place them into paper bag labeled shoes within the PPE kit in the trunk. This will isolate all the PPE equipment from the nurse inside their vehicle. At this time, the nurse can go ahead and take the alcohol solution and saturate both hands to isolate them while taking off the mask. The nurse will sufficiently cover the forearms and gloves. Next, grab the mask from the front, pull away and up over the ears, clear the top of the head of any obstructions in the back, such as ponytails, hats, or gowns. Next, you can take the peroxide vapor solution and spray lightly the front and back of the mask. The mask can now be placed in the paper bag labeled N95 mask within the PPE receptacle. The nurse will now take the remaining gloves off in a normal fashion, one inside the other one. She will isolate the trash bag and dispose of the gloves. Pull the trash bag up, secure it from the coat hanger, place the coat hanger back within the PPE compartment, tie off the trash sack, secure it, and then return it back to the patient's home. Per CDC guidelines, any trash can be left at the patient's house at the front. Communication to let the patient know that you'll be leaving the items once you leave. That would allow the nurse time to get out and decontaminate as well as time for the patient to come out once the nurse has left. That concludes the procedure. Thank you. As stated earlier, these procedures are to be used during the CDC PPE supply shortage. Since this is an unprecedented pandemic affecting everyone, we are asking individuals to take this video and critique it and make it better to help our fellow nurses in the field.